I actually have a comment here from Raj. He says, I wish I attended this call before I rented my house. On to Melissa. She's put together some resources um, for everybody to, to help minimize the risk, to help um, choosing your tenant. Melissa, you want to? I, like Carrie, am also in a real estate. I didn't start out this way. I had a manufacturing company and while I did that, um, I did flips and I was investing in my future and bought rental properties. Um, I've had max eight doors at one time, plus a commercial building and doing flips. 99.5% of the tenants are amazing. I had to define who I wanted to be as a landlord, number one what sort of tenants I wanted to have and how to appeal to those tenants. Uh, when I started, uh, there wasn't a lot of services available for uh, landlords. So everything that we had to do was manual back then. Um, initially, the first company that I dealt with, it was called TenCheck. Um, now there's other companies that seem far superior to that which I would highly recommend. And these are uh, companies that help you screen the tenants, catalog the tenants in the sense of, do they pay on time? Um, you can monitor everything that they're doing. And then there's sort of a global resource that everybody can have access to. And it is my understanding. I mean, there's no secrets to any of this. The tenants know that you're using the system. They agree to it. To keep it really simple, I set up five steps in order to approach being a landlord. Whether you have one property with, you know, two, but, you know, an up down rental, there's four doors or you've got a triplex. I had a triplex at one time in which I did two long term and one short term. I was flexible because we had issues with renting out the basement suite on a continuous basis. So we switched it over into Airbnb, trying that. This is actually before Airbnb was a thing. And it was incredibly beneficial. If you have more than one unit in a property, it is far better because you are hedging your bets on loss. And I love the mastering the art <laughs> of losing money with style because I think you do need to go into this. Um, it's an investment and you have to look at it as a business. That is the number one thing. So I always had a policy, number one, which was no family, no friends. Um, if I did rent to anybody that I knew-ish, there were, it was always done the same for them as it was everybody else. It's mitigate loss. So my five steps that I did were set your requirements, do initial screening, use an application, screen the tenant, and then make the decision of who you wanna to rent to. It sounds really simple. Um, decide what kind of a landlord you wanna be. Decide who you wanna to rent to. Do you wanna be student housing? Uh, do you want grad students? Because I can assure you grad students are not that great. Um, they're so focused on school that sometimes they don't look after the place that well. Do you want young professionals? Do you want divorced people? Um, single parents? Do you want to rent to um, places with kids? Think of whether or not, let's say for example, you have a triplex. If you have one floor with young students, and then you have a family on one floor, and then you have you know, a single guy in the basement. Are these people going to be able to live harmoniously? It sounds really simple, but you need to actually be cognizant of who you're renting to. So each tenant group has its pros and cons, and you have to determine what you wanna go with. Whenever I rented to students, Actually, they were always female. It seemed to always work out that way. I always had a cosign on the parents. I never had any problems with rent. Um, so that's almost a guaranteed thing. Depending on where you're located, uh, I had my rentals in Kitchener-Waterloo, so it was very student heavy in that particular area. So lots of competition and, and the market shifted as we're seeing in Hamilton right now with the student housing uh, buildings that they're um, building over near Mac. So define what you want, that's super important. 
And then the first step to screen the tenants is actually with your rental ad because how you word your ad will immediately screen out a lot of people. So for example, I like to appeal to professionals and I would always word the ad in such a way that the building itself was quiet. We had young working professionals in the building and I never had to say, you're not welcome. It was a given. So if we had young partiers, they're not gonna wanna live with old people that go to bed at 10 o'clock. Always be honest with your rental. So if you have somebody uh, in describing your rental, if you have somebody that is uh, newly divorced and they're downsizing, they're probably going to need a little bit more room for storage. So don't advertise your place as, you know, like three spacious bedrooms when you know really you're a two bedroom plus den and you don't have a lot of closet space because that's something that's really important. Um, that's step number one to screen and it's shocking how well that actually works with who will uh, call you or reply to the ad. The number three thing that I always did was create an application that was straight across the board for everybody because it immediately weeds them out and then you could evaluate each of your tenants uh, based on what they fill out, how they fill it out and compare them all always always ask for current and i always ask for two prior landlords up-to-date contact information let's always remember i don't know how many of you actually have rentals but sometimes when someone's looking for a new place their past landlord is going to speak highly of them because they want to get rid of them so if you can call the landlord before that landlord you might get a more honest answer would be honest about a tenant's um, maybe past not so great behavior in looking after the property or how well they integrated with the other units. I always ask for employment history with current contact information and personal references, prior evictions, always got a signature allowing for all of that information to happen. Um, the biggest and most important thing is that you follow up on all of that information and don't be lazy. You can wait just wait if you don't get a tenant that is the most desirable right away within the first 20 applications the right tenant will come along you don't want a tenant in there getting a tenant in is easy getting them out is not so easy especially now after all that we've been through in covid we've had a lot of issues with tenants that became professional at it uh, without paying and that is not something I would ever want any of my people to go through. Personally, I've been really lucky. I've never had a problem with any of them. Um, I've never actually even had to file forms. I've never had to go to landlord tenant. Like I've been really, really lucky, but I screened like a son of a bitch up front. <laughs> <laughs> and it True. stopped a lot of problems. Um, I can't stress that enough, actually. I screen with social media. A lot of people have private accounts. Um, a lot of people don't. And it's really quite shocking what people post on social media. And you can get an idea of what you think of a tenant right away just by looking at who they are and what they post online. It's crazy. Super, super important. Uh, and then basically after you go through all of that, just make the decision of who you want. Um, you've filed for a credit check. The screening companies do that. I personally uh, believe in having a credit check done. I use that sort of as the last when I'm getting down to the nuts and bolts of who I want to choose to be my tenant. Um, so I'm not running all these credit checks on people. I'm pretty confident by the time I reach that point and run the credit check that they're the ones that I want to have in my unit. And that's about it. It's Melissa. straightforward, but it's, it's worth it. Yes. Melissa, we were talking the other day about a company that not only provides greeting for all of your applicants, but that also provides insurance. Yes. Um, the, what was that company called? Uh, that one I think was Single Key. The the three that are sort of the top uh, is Single Key, Neighborly, and Rent Check. I think and Single Key is by Neighborly for some reason. I think they're the same company. Single Key was sort of the number one out of all of them. 
Um, they're amazing. I, I would highly recommend it. I used TenCheck, uh, which had switched over into something else. And then uh, the new ones are so much better. And it's uh -huh. really to mitigate risk. It's a, it's a small fraction and it's a cost of doing business with 100% write-off. So it's worth it. So from my understanding, they potentially cover single key, potentially covers if the tenant falls within certain criteria, yes. they will cover up to one year of um, non-payment of rent, which with a cap of $50,000, I believe they cover two months of rent for an early, um, what, you know, when a tenant gets up and moves pretty quickly to give you time to look for a new tenant and $5,000 in damage, yeah. um, which it's is, it's something worth looking into. Joe, have you had any experience with this? Any of these companies? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, no, I, I I've never used a third party. We do our own um, mm -hmm. uh, underwriting, but there's certain things. I mean, like you could see um, our tenants when they come in. Mm -hmm. um, if they're fidgety. You know, if they're, you know, like, it depends on, it's all, it's all little signs. It's that will tell you the story about who you're dealing yeah. with. Right. Tell them that. all to me. And, yeah. and, I, <laughs> I, I, and I love, I love the people that show up with a, a three piece suit, right. When they're, they're applying for a $1,200 apartment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you do for a living? You know, <laughs> that you're all dressed up, right? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of information that we can get um, ahead of time, even utilities, your bills. Uh, yes, yes. Over and above, like our credit check um, is yeah. one thing, but it's character. It's very, very hard to assess sometimes because you could have a beacon score of 880. <laughs> And it's like, wow, it won the lottery. Yeah, you can have it, right? Come on in, it's yours. And the first payment bounces, right? So it's not just your credit score. Um, so the third party would be definitely uh, um, an asset. I like. I never passed off uh, having my tenants and meeting them for the potentially the first time. That was always a face-to-face -face meeting after a phone call. And I agree with you, you 100%, 99.9% can read them. How do they look? How clean are they? Um, are they fidgety? Do they answer the questions clearly? I always give them the opportunity. What do you need to know about us? I would screen when we, I actually had some people complaining about how intensely I screened but my response to that is, well, if I'm screening you that intensely, that means I've screened the tenants that are living in the building that intensely. So, uh, you know, you're living with quality people around you. And yeah. if you don't like that, then we're not a good fit. And there is nothing wrong with saying to somebody, you know, maybe you're not a good fit for the building and right. putting it back on them. Um, but I do agree with you. A credit score doesn't say anything. Hence the post-grad students. They were yeah. my worst tenants. <laughs> they were the dirtiest people ever. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was disgusting. But they paid their rent on time. But it took me three days to clean their apartment after they left. <laughs> I actually have a comment here from Raj. He says, I wish I attended this call before I rented my house.